video five from topic three hardware from the Cambridge Computer Science IGCSE course. In this video we'll be looking at the following output devices, actuators, light projectors, inkjet and laser jet printers, 3D printers, LED and LCD screens and loudspeakers. Let's start with actuators. Now you may not have heard of the term actuator before but basically it's just a type of motor. An actuator is a part of a device or machine that helps it to achieve physical movement by converting energy, often electrical, air or hydraulic, into mechanical force. Simply put, it is the component in any machine that enables movement. Now actuators are present in almost every machine around us, from simple electronic access control systems, such as the vibrator on our mobile phone, vibrates the phone in our pockets, to industrial devices and robots machines for making cars on a production line. We move on to light projectors. There are two common types of light projector, which is known as a DLP and a liquid crystal display, an LCD projector. Now projectors are used to project computer output onto larger screens or even onto interactive whiteboards. They are often used in presentations and in multimedia applications. Well, how does it work? Well, as we said before, the DLP projectors are typically used for education in classrooms and business settings. But the DLP works by using optical microelectromechanical technology, millions of micro mirrors on a small digital device known as a DMD chip. That's this thing here. A bright white light source passes through a color filter on its way to the DMD chip. The white light is split into the primary colors, red, green, and blue. The DLP projector can create over 16 million different colors coming through the lens. On the other hand, the LED crystal display projector, the LCD projector, channels light first through a metal allied lamp and then through a prism or group of um, filters known as liquid crystal that divide the light into a trio of panels to handle red, green and blue elements of the display. Uh, consequently, these three different versions of the same image are now produced. One is the whole image in uh, different shades of red, one in different shades of green, and the other in different shades of blue. These images are then recombined using a special prism, a combining prism, to produce a full colour image. Finally, um, to focus the image, it's passed through a lens before it's displayed on a screen. I've put the advantages and disadvantages into this table here. Please pause the video to look at this in more detail. We move on to laser and inkjet printers, output devices that I'm sure you're familiar with and I'm sure that you've used before. Now the inkjet printer, this one at the top, these are often used for printing one-off photos or where only a few pages of good quality color printing is needed. The small ink cartridges, as we can see here, um, and the small paper trays would not be an issue with such applications. Whereas laser printers are used for high volume, high quality printouts, they're very fast. And they can print in both color and monochrome, black and white. And you generally use these for large number, high quality flyers, posters for advertising, etc. They have um, a large toner cartridge inside and they have a large paper tray, like this one here at the bottom. But how do they work? Well, the inkjet printer is a print head as you can see here, and that's on a sliding rod moving up and down a drive belt. The printhead consists of nozzles that spray droplets of ink onto the paper to form characters. The ink is usually um, blue, yellow and magenta and a black cartridge, or it can be a single cartridge with all four colours in. As I mentioned before, the stepper motor on the belt moves the printhead across the page from side to side, squirting out the ink. A paper feed, the paper feed at the top gravity feeds the paper into the printer and passes through the printer and we get the printed page on the other side. We've got a more detailed example here where the ink is passing through the nozzle, it's heated and the ink droplets go onto the page to form the image or the text. The laser printer works in a very different way. Um, they work by using a heated wire, an electrode, to positively charge a drum which is then passed over a laser that reverses the charge in the area that it hits. The now negatively charged areas of the drum represent the image or the text that is to be printed. A toner roll here is passed over the drum and the toner particles, i.e. dry ink powder, stick to the negatively charged areas 
A sheet of paper is then fed underneath the toner coated drum and the toner is passed onto its surface, now creating a printer copy of a digital document or an image. The final printer I want to look at is the 3D printer. 3D printers are regarded as being possibly the next industrial revolution um, since they will change, or they are changing, how manufacturing methods are taking place. Um, we've got a list of different, we've got a list of different examples of, of what um, 3D printers are being used for at this moment in time. This is just a small number, there are many many more applications. First of all, prosthetic limbs can be made to exactly fit into the body where they need to go. It also allows for making items that allow precision reconstructive surgery following um, an accident. In aerospace, making wings and other parts using 3D technology, um, you can create some um, very, very light, very, very precise parts. Fashion and art, where new creative ideas are being developed, certainly in the fashion industry. And making 3D parts for products that no longer exist, such as suspension parts for a, maybe a vintage motor car. Here I've got another example, a giant 3D printer which is printing 3D housing and this prints out cement and these can be printed so all over the world very very quickly. We move on to LED and LCD screens. Um, there is some confusion with the syllabus and um, lots of students have told me about this and they don't understand what, what's happening. Basically if you were to Google LCD and LED monitors they're both the same both exactly the same the only difference being is an LCD uses a fluorescent backlight and the LED uses um, light emitting diodes um, they both look like this image at the top now what the syllabus is talking about are large LED screens these like these in, uh, in Times Square in New York and uh, large outdoor displays these are made up of tiny light emitting diodes LEDs each LED is either red green or blue in color and by varying the electric current sent to each of these LEDs, its brightness can be controlled, producing a vast range of brilliant bright colors. So LED screens. As we said, LED screens are made up of tiny liquid crystals. These tiny crystals make up an array of pixels that are affected by changes in applied electric fields. LCDs don't produce any light, therefore we need some kind of backlight. So LED screens use the light emitting diodes, the LCDs use some other form of um, backlighting. And then we move on to the third one, which you may have in your homes at this moment in time, but OLED screens. Monitors and TV sets are using this kind of technology. This is basically a screen that is using organic light emitting diodes, in short OLEDs. These use organic materials made up of carbon compounds to create semiconductors that are very flexible. Organic films are sandwiched between two charged electrodes. One is a metallic cathode and the other is a glass anode. When an electric field is applied to the electrodes, they give off light. This means there's no form of backlighting needed. This also allows for very, very thin screens. OLED technology allows screens to be bent into any shape. When mobile phone manufacturers start to use this, which I know Samsung have started, it will make it possible to develop phones that can be wrapped around your wrist or screens that can be folded up and placed inside your pocket and then brought out and unfolded when needed. We move on to loudspeakers. A loudspeaker is an output device which receives audio signals from your computer's processor and outputs it as a sound wave. Uh, the digital data is first passed through a digital to analog converter, a DAC, where it is changed into an electric current. This is then passed through an amplifier to increase the sound and this creates a large enough sound to drive the loudspeaker. The electric current is fed to the speaker where it is converted into sound. We've got a schematic picture here where we've got the computer um, sending the digital sound signal to a DAC which converts it to analog which then passes through an amp and then this is outputted to the large speaker. And that ladies and gentlemen is it. Thank you very much indeed for watching. The next video we'll look at is sensors. Please hit subscribe, click on notifications and I will let you know as soon as the next video is available. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now.